Hello, in this video we will be talking about functional programming. Before we start, if you're interested in this subject, check out this book, Grokking Functional Programming. It goes into a lot more detail than this five minute video. And if you buy the book through the link in the description, you will be supporting this channel. So what do we mean when we say a language is functional? Languages like Scala, Haskell and so on. If you try to search for this definition, what is a functional language using Google, it will give you a vague definition, something along the lines that a language allows you to write functions similar to mathematical expressions. This doesn't really tell us much and is a little bit confusing. The reason why it's confusing is because we are asking ourselves the wrong question. It's not the language that we need to worry about, but our way of programming. After all, it's the code that we write that becomes functional and not the programming language. A better question to ask would be to say what are the functional principles that we should follow when we are writing code. And then a functional language is simply a language that gives you the most tools and help so you can follow these principles. So let's have a look at three main principles from functional programming. The first principle is to try to not have too many side effects in your code. What is a side effect? A side effect is something that changes the state after you perform an operation, such for example calling a function. Let's have a look at an example of a function that doesn't have a side effect. Inside here, in the class example, I am writing a function called cubed, accepting one parameter, the parameter x, which is a number. And this function is just going to return the value of x to the power of 3. So x multiplied by x multiplied by x. If I now print the result of this example cubed by 3, as expected when I go and run this function, it gives me the result of 27. This is an example of a function that doesn't have any side effects. It's self-contained. It's not changing the state of anything. I can write another function over here that's called increment counter by accepting also the parameter x and inside this function i am going to increment an internal counter by x after incrementing this i can return the value of counter and for this i need to create the attribute counter this second function is an example of a function that has a side effect it is changing the state every time you call it the second principle is to write your functions so they are referential transparent. Now this sounds like something very complicated, but in fact it is quite simple. It means that you can change the body of your function with a constant without altering the behavior of your program for the same input of that function. And as an effect of this referential transparency, calling the same function with the same exact inputs will always return you the same outputs. Again, let's see an example of this. Let's create a function called string space and it's going to accept two parameters a and b and it's going to return the string interpolated result of the string a with a space and then b. This is an example of a function that is referential transparent. No matter how many times we call this function with the same two inputs, it will always give us the same output. For comparison, let's write another function that is not referential transparent, and let's call it description random, accepting a prefix string. And it's going to return the interpolated string with our prefix, and then we're going to do random dot random integer between one and 10. And you understand why this function is not referential transparent, because every time we call this function, it can potentially give us a different return value. Let's call both of these functions. I have here the call to the first function and to the second one. The first function we're calling it with hello world, and the second function we're calling it with this prefix. When I go ahead and run it, as expected, it gives me hello world, and random number is five. If I go ahead and run it again, the first call is going to give me the same exact output. This is because it is referential transparent. However, the second call gives me a different output. It gives me a random number each time. No matter how many times I call it, the first function is always going to give me the same output. And in fact, the definition of referential transparency is that you can replace the body of the function with a constant for the same two inputs. So over here, I can replace it to say hello world, and the behavior of my program does not change. 
The third and final principle is the principle of immutability. This means that when we create a new object or a new data structure, we are not allowed to change it. We are not allowed to change the data inside. If we need to modify it, we need to create another copy and leave the original version intact without any changes. Again, let's see an example of this. Let's create a variable called letters and it will be a list containing three different letters, the letter A, B and the letter C. If I want to add more characters to this list, I can do letters.append and put in the character D. And then I can do it again and this time I put the character E. And now I can print the contents of the list letters and when I run it, it gives me the entire list, A, B, C, D, E. This is an example of a mutable list. Python over here, the language that we're using, allows me to modify the contents of the list after I have created it. Immutability means that after you create something, you are not allowed to alter it. You can only create a new copy with the changes that you require. Let's see an example of a type of data structure that is immutable in Python. And let's create the variable over here called letters tuple. And we can fill this tuple with three characters, A, B, C. And now if we want to add more characters to our tuple, we can do letters tuple two, and this will be the value of letters tuple together with the letters of D and E. And now we can go ahead and print out the contents of the letters tuple to variable, but also the contents of the letters tuple. And when we run this, you can see that the letters tuple to contains all the letters up to E. However, the original list, the shorter one, has been unchanged. We haven't added anything to it. This is just to show you an immutable data structure. So in summary, we have these three principles of immutability, referential transparency, and no side effects that we should follow when we are programming functionally. But in reality, these three principles are connected together. If you think about it, if you have a function that doesn't have a side effect, it is also referential transparent. If it's not changing its state, calling it over and over again will always return the same value. And in the same way, if you're not changing state, your objects and data structures will be immutable and also referential transparent. So really, when you're programming functionally, you only have to keep in mind one of these principles and the rest follows. And in functional programming speak, when we write a function that is following all of these three principles, we usually call it a pure function. So functional programming is all about writing your code, so it is composed of just pure functions. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and also please support me by checking out the links in the description.